Hi everybody, Hassan Sharik, Regulated Canadian Immigration Consultant, back with another video on Canadian Immigration. My prayers and wishes that all of you, along with your families, are doing really well wherever in the world you are. It's been a while that I made a video uh, and got the opportunity to connect with all of you folks. Missed this activity myself and hopefully from now onwards I can be a little more regular in this. Today's video is about Canadian study permit stream or category called the student direct stream, SDS stream. The reason that I'm making this video is that uh, there is a large number of students who join um, Canadian universities and colleges in the fall term, which is the upcoming term in September. And now that the COVID um, situation is at our back, a large number of students have applied for admission. Um, are looking to apply for, for, for their visas um, and uh, move to Canada for their in-person classes. So I thought this is a good time where I can talk about the SDS stream and a lot of you can benefit from this. So for details on the Student Direct Stream, stay tuned till the end of the video. So to begin, Student Direct Stream, um, this was launched a few years ago um, by the Canadian government where they wanted to help expedite the study permit application process for students from certain countries now keep in mind that right now as of today when we, we when i'm recording this video if you look at the overall average processing time for for a canadian study permit it stands at about 13 weeks which is about what three months so generally it takes on an average between two to three months for a canadian study permit application um, that is where um, this stream was launched a few years ago. So let's have a look at the details for this stream and then I'll be looking at the screen because there's a lot of details. So I'll be, I'll be looking there and I'll be talking with you folks as well. So first of all, uh, this particular stream, one of the major attractions about this stream is that um, um, if you apply uh, under the STS stream, your study permit application, Canadian study permit application can be processed uh, within 20 calendar days. So that's that's the major attraction. And there is definitely um, benefits in terms of visa approval rate as well, because there is certain scrutiny which is done and we'll talk about it as we go. Um, keep in mind that this particular stream is uh, only available for um, a select number of uh, applicants. There are certain eligibility requirements. So we'll have a look at uh, those eligibility requirements one by one. So first up, uh, this particular um, study permit stream, the SDS um, student visa stream, uh, is only available for residents of specific countries. Um, these countries are, one by one I'll mention, um, Antigua and Barbuda, Brazil, China, Colombia, Costa Rica, India, uh, Morocco, Pakistan, uh, Peru, Philippines, Senegal, St. Vincent, um, um, Trinidad and Tobago, and Vietnam. Important thing to keep in mind is that you need to be a legal resident of these countries and not specifically just the citizen. So if you are somebody who's residing in one of these, these around 12 to 13 countries, you are eligible to apply under STS. But if you are a citizen from these countries and you're based elsewhere, um, giving you an example, like if you are a Vietnam national, but you are living in say um, UAE um, or, or, or Malaysia, in that case, you cannot apply for, uh, for STS uh, for as long as you're not in your home country. But if you're a Vietnamese who is living elsewhere, but for your study permit application, you move back to Vietnam and apply, you can apply. So first eligibility, you must be residing in one of these countries. It's not open for everybody. Secondly, uh, you must have an acceptance letter from uh, a post-secondary uh, DLI, which is a designated learning institution in Canada. So you should have applied for admission and by now you should have received uh, an acceptance letter. Um, it can be conditional um, because a lot of times high school applicants who are applying for fall term entry, they still haven't taken their IB or A-level exams. So they might still be waiting for that. But as long as you have a letter of acceptance, you, you can apply. 
um, you must live outside of Canada when you apply. So this is not for people who are living, uh, who are currently based in Canada on some sort of status. And this connects back to the eligibility countries that we had. Canada is not one of those countries. So if you're living in Canada, you're not a resident of one of one of those 12, 13 countries. Um, hence, you cannot apply for STS while you're living and um, while you're in Canada. Uh, you have to show proof of one year upfront tuition fee payment. So whichever institution you get admitted to, um, any university, any college, whatever the first year tuition fee is, you are required to pay that upfront. Now, a lot of times universities and colleges do not have this requirement. Rather, uh, to accept your offer, sometimes they only say that you have to deposit like a $500 or like a few thousand dollars. Um, but but for this, this visa, you have to submit the full tuition fee. So just giving you an example, um, say you've been uh, admitted by, um, by a university in Canada, the fee for the university, annual tuition fee for the university is $25,000. The tuition fee, uh, not the residence and other costs. The tuition fee is say $25,000. Uh, uh, and um, the requirement by the university is that to accept your offer, you only have to pay say $5,000. Now you can accept that with $5,000, but if you want to apply through the SDS stream, then you have to make payment for the $25,000 and show proof of that. With that, you have to show proof of obtaining uh, uh, GIC certificates, uh, the guaranteed investment certificates, equivalent to an amount of Canadian $10,000. Um, now, these are basically um, investment certificates in Canadian financial institutions. So what you have to do is that you have to transact from, from uh, your home country where you're living um, through banking channel and buy GIC investment certificates in, in Canadian banks and financial institutions. There's a list of it, um, which I can, I can, the link I can provide in the, um, in the description of this video. So uh, two important aspects. Having GIC certificates uh, of 10,000 Canadian dollars and one year upfront tuition fee payment. And that's where um, I link it back to what I said in the introduction that there is um, one of the benefits of STS is quick processing. And the second one is uh, favorable uh, decisions. And still, it's not a guaranteed um, um, acceptance, but because you have already shown proof uh, of payment of funds uh, for first year, uh, $10,000 equivalent to the living cost and, and, and the first year tuition fee, you know, there's a strong chance that um, your visa can be accepted or approved. Um, other than that, you have to get a medical exam and police certificate if that's required for you um, beforehand. Um, and most importantly, a very important requirement for, for STS is that you must have um, a valid language test result to show at the time of your study permit application. Now, um, for the normal Canadian study permit stream, it is not a mandatory requirement that you show uh, proof of um, uh, in, uh, language proficiency results. This is actually a requirement which is on behalf of the institution. So if an institution has admitted you, um, immigration is, is not to really ask, but for SDS, there is a requirement. If you're looking at, at, at um, English language test, then it has to be IELTS. Um, you must have a score of six in each of the four modules. And if you're looking at French language proficiency, then it is the TEF, which is test de Valion de France. I'm sorry, uh, my, my French pronunciation is not good at all. Um, and you must have um, a score of at least seven in each of the skills. So this is an important requirement that you must fulfill if you're applying for SDS. In terms of, as I mentioned um, about the, the financial institutions where you have to buy a GIC, the GIC has to be bought in the name of the student. And in most cases, the GIC has to be bought by, like the transaction has to be done by, uh, from your home country. Sometimes you have your relatives and stuff here in Canada. Uh, they are not allowed to do a transaction and buy these GICs in the name of students. So this is, this is important. Some of the institutions that you could use, um, and again, I'll, 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 I'll give the complete list in the description of the video, but there's the Bank of Beijing, Bank of China, Bank of Montreal, BMO, um, uh, Bank of Xi'an, um, Co-Limited, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, CIBC, um, 
China, Everbright Bank, The Jordans, Habib Canada, Canadian Bank, HSBC, Bank of Canada, ICICI Bank, Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, RBC, um, um, the Royal Bank in Canada, SBI Canada Bank, Scotia Bank, Simply Financial, and TD Canada Trust, um, a widely known um, Canadian bank. So these are the institutions where you have to uh, transact um, equivalent to 10,000 Canadian dollars and buy by GIC. Um, now, now let's move on towards how to apply. For SDS, uh, what happens is that in most cases you have to submit your application online. Um, but and, and and that's that's the that's the better way of applying. Now you can you can submit the application on your own, or if you're looking for assistance, you can use the services of a regulated Canadian immigration consultant or a Canadian immigration lawyer to help you uh, with this application. Uh, do keep in mind that whenever you need assistance on Canadian study permit application, always use. Um, either in uh, a regulated Canadian immigration uh, consultant, RCIC, or a Canadian immigration lawyer, uh, because only these people are trained and then licensed um, under the Canadian laws to represent you on, on, um, on any form of Canadian visa or immigration application, even the, the study permit application. So you can apply on your own or you can ask your authorized representative to do it. Um, you will um, create your online as, um, uh, IRCC account uh, and over there you will you'll submit your application, all documents, you have to upload the scans of those um, uh, and make your fee payments. One important aspect is that as I mentioned that there is these 12 to 13 different countries uh, which are part of the STS stream. For each of these, um, um, it is very important that each, country, uh, each country's application is processed by a different visa office. Uh, which is outside of Canada. And based on which country uh, you're applying um, in, uh, each visa office might have a different requirement. Um, uh, so some documentation uh, might be specific to that particular country. Uh, and that's why what you need to do is that you need to go online um, and you need to look for um, the specific country requirements. There is there is a drop down on the website of uh, Canadian um, Immigration Department where you can you can pick each of the countries. So I'll just give you an example that in the in the drop down menu we have uh, various countries. So I'm I'm picking Vietnam for for, for now. So if you pick Vietnam and you continue, um, uh, there are specific visa office instructions um, there is a document um, i click on that um, and it clearly says that um, the ho chi minh city office is the one which which processes applications for for vietnamese um, uh, resident uh, vietnam resident applicants and there is a checklist as to what documents are supposed to be submitted. Police certificate, letter of acceptances, uh, medical examination, proof of funds in certain manners, and then there is a declaration. So you need to make sure that you have a look at the country specific um, um, uh, checklist and make sure to attach those documents as well because if you miss out on, on providing any of these, then your application might uh, not be processed under STS. One thing that I've been asked quite a lot of times by clients um, uh, and generally there have been queries online as well. If say for instance you you apply, um, you basically submit your application uh, as an STS application but say for instance you're missing one of these like your, your IELTS was not six in all, uh, there was one 5.5 but you submit application as an STS. So your application is not right away rejected Rather, um, it is uh, not processed under STS stream, but they will start processing it as a normal application. So that's the only difference. Um, one last thing that I'd like to highlight over here is that a lot of people at times have a confusion that when they're applying under STS, just these basic documents like the proof of um, fee payment and GIC and, and language test and letter of acceptance, only this is required. Once you, you provide these, um, um, you will for sure be granted a visa. No, that's not the case. Just like any other study permit application, there are approvals and there are rejections on SDS as well. So it is very important for you to build a very strong case 
uh, in terms of your study permit application and you know the study plan the, uh, the the financial means the proof of funds how will your education be funded um, all these supporting documents must be be provided with the STS application as well otherwise you will face the risk of rejection um, and god forbid uh, none of us wants that um, um, so so important thing that i wanted to highlight i've actually made a video about um, uh, options one has uh, if your study permit application gets rejected um, you can you can you can have a look at that video uh, if you if god forbid your visa has been rejected all you would want to know how what to do so this was all uh, for today on sts um, the student direct stream application there are uh, links in the description um, there's actually um, a very good article uh, written by um, an online visa blog uh, which uh, um, called visa journal I'll, I'll i'll place that in the description of the video as well and they've, they've provided a lot of details on this you can actually find links to all all these um, country specific um, uh, visa office requirements um, so do have a look at that as well um, and with that I'll, I'll ask for a leave. Um, hopefully I've been able to add some value to you in terms of the uh, SDS visa application. If there are any questions or queries that you have, feel free to write them in the comment section uh, and myself and my team will be more than happy to answer uh, on those. Um, and good luck to all of you who are applying for their fall term study permit applications for Canada. Um, do not delay it any further. We are already in the beginning of June. Um, anything beyond mid-June, you might get very tight uh, for fall term uh, class start. With that, my prayers and wishes, wherever you are, uh, you stay well, uh, enjoy the time with your loved ones, pray for me, I'll see you soon with another video on Canadian immigration. Take care and Allah Hafiz.